Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com coming to you today from the shores of the mighty River Nile in order to bring you episode number 18 in our incredible tutorial series where you're learning how to make Arduino and Python work together. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 17. Now, if you remember where we left off in lesson number 17, we had used Visual Python to create a three-dimensional room. In the room was a marble, and that marble was bouncing around in the room off of all the walls in the X, the Y, and the Z direction. Now, we made it a little more interesting last week by adding a paddle at the front of the room, and that paddle's position was controlled with a joystick stick hook up to, hooked up to Arduino. But regardless of where the paddle was, as you move the joystick, the paddle would move properly. You could control the position of the paddle, but the marble bounced no matter where the paddle was. Now, what your homework assignment was, was to go in and turn this into a game, like a three-dimensional version of the old classic arcade game of Pong. How many of you guys were successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend. And if you were not successful, leave a comment down below. I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. But if you did get the homework, make sure that you post it to YouTube. And then in the description of your post, make sure you link back to this video. Then on this video, down in the comments, leave a comment pointing people over to your homework solution. I look at every single solution to the homework that you guys post. And it's really exciting to me because some of you guys are doing some really, really cool and really exciting work. Some of you guys are doing much better than what I'm doing. And so I think that's great. What I also think is great is I think it's really neat how you guys are starting to subscribe to each other's channel and you're starting to kind of look at each other's solutions, developing a little bit of a sense of community around here. And I think that is just really neat. But enough of this introductory chit chat. Let's jump in and let's talk about what we are going to do. <clears throat> I am going to need to switch my views here. Give me just a second to do a little bit of Windows management. Okay, I think you can see the screen that I need you to screen see. And so what I'm going to need you to do is fire up your most excellent Visual Studio code. And I have a bad feeling that I just clicked on Google Earth. <laughs> Good thing it was not on the screen you were looking at. Okay, here is Visual Studio Code. <clears throat> we'll come over to the Explorer view, and then I will get out of your way. And then uh, what we'll do is I'll remind you that we're working in the Pi Arduino folder. We're going to create a new file, and it is going to be pass data. <clears throat> dash 13 dot py, and the dot py is kind of important, and boom fresh new Python program, just waiting for you to write. Now, we don't want to write it from scratch. We want to start where we left off in lesson number 17. So you guys probably already have that code, but in case you don't, I got you covered. You can go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. And in this happy little search bar over here, I need you to search on something like using an Arduino with Python lesson 17, controlling paddle position with a joystick. When you come down here, this is the code. This first bit of code is the code that I have in the Arduino. I'm not going to take time to grab that and download it because it is already in my Arduino. If you don't have it, grab it, put it in your Arduino. And then the second uh, uh, bunch of code is the code that we were using on the Python side. So we're going to grab this code by clicking on these <clears throat> two little page icons. Click. It's copied to the uh, clipboard. We come over here, right mouse click and paste. 
where's paste there it is right mouse click and paste and there it is over here now okay let's just make sure that the universe is in proper working order and let's make sure that this code still runs that we haven't broken anything as we copied and pasted okay it pops up giddy up look at that okay now i've got the joystick i can move the paddle to the left to the right up down and uh i can cover the corners just making sure that i can cover the the game space the play area and yes i can move it wherever i want and it actually moves pretty smoothly so we are where we left off at last week <clears throat> and so now we are ready to move forward. Let's jump back over here and let's look at the code for a second. And you know, we create the room using parameters. Okay, then we create the parameters for our paddle. We create the parameter for our paddle and then we define some parameters for our marbles. And then basically what happens is we grab data from the uh, Arduino to tell us where the joystick is. And then we are doing a lot of work in bouncing the marble. We have to see if the marble hits the left or the right wall, it needs to change its X direction. If it hits the top or the bottom, the floor or the ceiling, it needs to change its Y direction. And if it hits the front or the back wall, it needs to change its Z direction. And so this is looking for the front or this is looking for the left or right wall. That's X. Then this is the uh, top or bottom. That's Y. And then this is the Z. OK, but what I need you to think about now, what I need you to think about in this particular case, what you have to see is you have to see that we're always going to bounce off the back wall because the back wall is the back wall. But now on the front wall, you don't just automatically, you don't just automatically bounce off of that front wall. You only bounce off of the front wall if the ball has intersected the paddle. If the ball doesn't intersect the paddle, it jailbreaks, then it's either game over or you lose a point or something like that. Okay, so what is it? that we've got to go in and we've got to sharpen our pencil on. It's when the ball hits the front wall. Well, the front is Z, that's the positive Z direction. And so that is when if marble Z plus marble R, marble Z plus marble R is greater than room Z over two minus wall T over two, that is not going to be that simple anymore. And so we need to get rid of that be nice if you could see it. We need to get rid of all of that with the or. All of that with the or we're going to get rid of. All right. And then let me get my my things back straight here. And so I need to put the if back in. And then we're just looking at that back wall. And that back wall would be uh, that back wall would be if marble Z, where the marble is, minus marble R is less than the the back wall position and so that should still that should still be good I'm looking at this just to think for a second that should be right that should be right okay so uh, where the marble is minus the radius and then looking at the back wall okay now what do we have to deal with we got to think about the much more complicated situation of the marble coming up towards the front wall and either missing the paddle or hitting the paddle and bouncing off. Okay, hitting the paddle and bouncing off. Because this turned out to be a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought it'd just take me five minutes, but I really had to kind of think about it. And so I'd be really interested to know if you guys were able to kind of figure this out or if you struggled with it as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to get it working on paper first. And after it's working on paper, it should be pretty straightforward to code it up. So let's go over to our wonderful Sketchpad view. And I'm going to try so hard hard to be neat. And so what we are going to be thinking about is we are going to be thinking about we are going to be thinking about the Z direction. That's the direction coming out of the screen and your paddle is coming out of the screen towards you. That is the Z direction that we are going to be working with. And then what I want you to see is I want you to see that we've got to first of all ask ourselves 
has the marble reached the front of the room? Has the edge of the marble met the front of the room? Because remember, we still have a front of the room. We still have a front of the room. It's just transparent. But has the marble gotten to that point? And so here is the front face of the room. Okay, and now what we want to think about is we want to think about that marble as it comes up and touches the front edge of the room. Okay, well, what parameter, what parameter do we care about with the marble? Well, first of all, this direction is Z, and so what we're interested in is marble Z. Okay, marble Z. And that marble Z would be this position here. But it's not when the center of the ball hits the front wall. It's when the edge of the ball hits the front wall. So it's not marble Z. It's marble Z plus what? Marble Z plus the radius, which would be marble R is what we called marble R. Now, when and that, this defines, the marble Z plus marble R defines this point, this edge of the marble. Now, what do we care when that hits the front edge of the wall? So when that is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to what? This, okay? Well, let's first talk about what the center of this wall is the center of the wall is very easy. That is just going to be the center of the wall is going to be room Z divided by two. Okay, it's positive because it's coming out this way. And remember, we put the front wall positive, the Z dimension of the room divided by two, and we put the back wall at minus room Z divided by two. So the origin is exactly in the middle of the room. So we come out from the origin, we come out from the center of the room, half the Z dimension of the room. And that would be this room Z divided by two would be this center point. But we don't want the center point, we want this point. Well, that would be the center point, what? Minus the wall thickness divided by two, All right? And so this is going to be our first if statement. We got to first of all figure out before we do anything else, has the marble reached the wall? Okay, let's go ahead and code that much of it up and then we will come back and then we'll figure out what we got to do next. But let's go, see, let's go ahead and see if we can get that in there. So we'll switch back over here to the code view. And then I try to keep this code up here. I try to keep this code up here where it's not in your not in your way. Okay, so remember we have this if marble Z minus marble R, that is the back wall. Now we got to think about the front wall. So now I'm going to say, and this is a new lined up with the other if statement. I'm going to say to deal with that, we have to now say if marble Z plus marble R is greater than or equal to room Z divided by, as much as I tried, that ended up behind my head, is equal to room Z divided by two, okay, room Z divided by two, and then what? Minus wall, wall thickness divided by two. Okay, and where did we get that? We got it from the drawing that I just did. Okay, now, if that is true, that means the ball has reached the wall. But now we have to decide. Now we have to decide. Very important. It's at the wall, but has it hit the paddle or has it missed the paddle? If it hits the paddle, then we've got to change direction. If it misses the paddle, if it misses the paddle, 
Then what we have to do is we have to jailbreak and then either deduct a point or game over or something like that. And so inside of this if statement, we now need to be thinking about the other case. And so let's go back over to our sketch pad view. I better take a swig of coffee here. Okay, we've got this part all done. And so I think the smart thing for me to do would be to come over here and go ahead and just erase that. Okay, and then let's start again. Now what I'm gonna do is we are going to draw our paddle. And so let's come in and let's use this. Okay, so we're gonna come in and we're gonna draw the paddle. Okay, well, what you know is a lot of things, a lot of things are going to be based on, a lot of things are gonna be based on the center position of the paddle. Okay, the center position of the paddle. And where is the center position of the paddle? Okay, the center position of the paddle is the point pad X and comma pad Y. That is this point here, like that, okay? Pad X comma pad Y. And we set that up, go back and look at your code. It's all set up at the top of the code that we already have. Now what we have to think about is we have to think about how big is this? This size is paddle X. And this size is what? This size is paddle Y. All right, so now we can start defining our edges. This edge here, this edge here is what? It is pad X plus paddle X divided by two. Okay, because we're here and then we jump over by half the size of the box. And so now I have, now I have the position of the right edge of the paddle. Now, similarly, let's do the left edge over here. Well, that's very easy now. That is just pad X minus paddle X divided by two. Okay, so now we have this point and we have this point. Now we need to know what is the top. Okay, what is the top of the paddle? Well, this would be, this point would be at paddle Y, okay, paddle Y plus, it would be, I misspoke, it's analogous, it's pad Y, which is this, it's pad Y, plus what? Plus half of paddle Y. Pad Y plus half of paddle Y, like that. Okay, now we have, and so now we have, now we have this point, now we just need the bottom here, this point, and that is going to be easy, it's pad Y, Okay, minus, minus paddle Y divided by two. Okay, now we have to think about the ball. All right, we gotta think about the ball. So let's draw the ball or the marble here. All right, here's the ball. The ball doesn't wanna draw. Okay. There it goes. Okay. Now this, remember, that we have this position of the ball. What is that? We're going to be worried about marble X, and we're going to be worried about marble Y. And I need to I need to write it up here. We're worried about marble X and marble Y. 
and that is this position here. Okay, but really it's this plus marble R. No, it's not. It's just this. Because if this, if this point here, and let me let me circle it, you can't see me pointing. If this point is anywhere within this box, we bounce. Okay. And that is inside of that other if statement. All right. So what you got to see is if the ball is at the front wall. Now we have to see is the ball, is the marble within this box? Is the marble, the center of the marble, is the center of the marble within this box? Okay. Now you need to write down all of these four positions. Okay, because these four positions matter. So now on our if statement where we decide whether we bounce or not, how many conditions do we have? Four. The marble X needs to be less than the right side. It needs to be greater than the left side. It needs to be less than the top, and it needs to be more than the bottom of the paddle. And if that's not the case, then we are going to call it a miss. And so now with this, make sure that you write these things down so it'll make sense when I start coding. Okay, so let's go back over here and let's see if we can start coding now. I know that's tedious, but man, if you guys can just draw this, your life is going to be a whole lot easier because you can't just go in and wing it. You've really got to kind of think through this. Okay, so right here, if this condition is true, that means the marble has reached the front wall. The marble has reached the front wall. Now we've got to say, do we bounce or do we not bounce? Well, what are the conditions under which we will bounce? And again, this is inside that other if statement. <clears throat> well, the first would be if marble X is greater than the paddle X position minus paddle X divided by two. And you should see that from that other thing that is making sure that the marble that is making sure that the marble is greater than the left side of the paddle, that it's it's greater than the left side of the paddle. But way, way out here is greater than the left side of the paddle. So not only does that need to be true, it also needs to be true that it's less than the other side of the paddle. And so that would be a what? That would be an and. And the and would be then marble X needs to be less than the other side of the paddle, which is pad X plus paddle X divided by two, okay? But if it's in there this way, it also has to not miss above and not miss below. So we have another and, and that and is going to be almost exactly like this, okay? Only it's gonna be Y this time, okay? It's gonna be Y this time. So we're going to come here and we're going to paste that, okay? And it's going to be marble Y, and then it has to be pad Y, and then paddle Y divided by two, okay? And then if that is true, we have to put our colon. We still have one more condition, and that is and. This is going to be, it's greater than the bottom. It needs to be less than the top. And that is kind of like the second X. It's got this, this, we're going to take this one, the second X one. Okay. And we're going to put it here. And we're going to change that to Y, Y and why. How many conditions? Four. It's got to be below the top of the paddle, above the bottom of the paddle, to the right of the left of the paddle, and to the left of the right of the paddle. And if all four of those are true, 
we bounce. Okay, so then how do we bounce? How do we bounce? Well, that is real easy. We've been doing this a long time. This is inside that second if statement, inside that second if statement. And in fact, it's exactly how we bounced up here. We just changed the Z direction. So we can grab those two lines of code and we come here and they change the Z direction and just make sure we have our indents right. Okay. And I've got, am I missing a colon? Okay, that's there. I have and. I have and. I have and. Why does it not like delta Z? We've got an error in here, or otherwise it wouldn't underline it, but let's go ahead and run it. Maybe you guys saw my error. Ah, it's not indented under that if. Okay. We're indenting under the second if statement. Now all is copacetic. Doesn't count as an error if you catch it before you run it. Okay. So now that is what happens. All right, so let's run this thing and let's see what happens. Oh, this is kind of scary, isn't it? <clears throat> okay, let's run this thing. Let's get our joystick ready. Okay, ah, jailbreak. What is wrong that for us just getting ready and debugging this program, what is wrong? It is going way, way too fast. And so we need to slow that down. And the way we do that is with those delta X and delta Y and delta Z. So instead of delta X, delta Y, delta Z of 0.1, let's slow it way down like 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, because we want to see if it works. And so we really want to be able to carefully move that, uh, carefully move that joystick. So let's try it now and let's see what happens. Okay, I'm coming up and I'm coming up. It's coming slowly, so I'm getting it right there. Okay. This is painfully slow, but at least we're gonna be able to see if it works. Okay, and it bounced. Okay, and how do we know it bounced? We know it bounced because it's going the other way now. So that worked. Now, what we don't know is we don't know if it would actually miss or if it would always bounce. And so we need to check that out as well. And so let's come over here. Let's speed it up a little bit. We're going too slow. We're going silly slow here. And so let's come back to our code. Let's kill it. And as, instead of 0.01, let's go like 0.3. I think I can hit that thing with a 0.3. I think I am that good. And so let's try to run it like that. And now what I want to see is I'm going to deliberately miss it. Okay, I'm going to deliberately miss it. Okay, and when I deliberately miss it, boom, it jailbroke. Okay, it jailbroke. Do you see that? All right, now you might think, wow, we're done. But there is a little bit of a problem and that little bit of a problem is, let's see if that, that's still going the other way. There is a condition that we haven't thought about yet. And what that condition is, let me just come and show you in the code. I was hoping that I could make it do it, but this is the condition that we have to think about. And this is why you've really got to troubleshoot your code well. What you have to see is once the marble leaves the room, once the marble leaves the room, this condition is always going to be true, right? Because marble Z plus marble, our marble Z is out in Albuquerque now, right? Marble Z is in Albuquerque. And so this condition is always going to be true. And now it's going to be looked to see if this condition is true. So imagine the ball is way out here. The ball is way, way out here. But the paddle aligns with the ball then it is going to come back to you in your room, even though it shouldn't. And so it like it, it like turns around like you did something good, but you can't let that happen. So we've got to take that case and we've got to make sure that that doesn't happen. So this is like one of the few times I think in 10 years of publishing on YouTube, this is the first time you've ever seen me use an else statement, but I'm going to say else. 
And that is, is that if it doesn't match because you missed, okay, you missed and it doesn't match, you need to come in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say label is equal to label. Man, that's getting annoying. Okay, in my else, I'm going to create a label and it's going to be called uh, LB. And what that label is going to just be is the, te the text is going to be game over, game over like that. Okay, so once the ball leaves the room, once the marble leaves the room, the game is over. Now, you can go in and you can do things much better than this, like you can start keeping score and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm just showing you what you need to do to get the game working and then you can come in and make it better. Now, what else? At this point, you just don't want the ball to go from Albuquerque to Phoenix to San Diego, right? You want the gameplay to stop. So you've got to kind of kill the program at this point. So what you want to do is give the person time to see that the game is over. So I'm going to say time.sleep. I'm going to say let's leave it for what, two seconds? Okay, like that. Now it doesn't like time because we didn't import that library. So we need to come back up here and we need to say import time so we can do the sleep command. <clears throat> and then also what we are going to need to do is we are going to need to import OS like that, the operating system, and then we actually want to kill the program. And I do believe, if I remember right, that I can do an OS dot, an OS dot exit, and then I just give it a parameter like zero. It's not OS dot exit, it is OS underscore exit zero. And that will take you out of the program and stop it and stop everything without getting a bunch of error messages and crashes. You can see doing it the wrong way. Yeah, it stopped, but it stopped on an error and we want to, we want to exit cleanly. Okay. So now let's run this thing and it should cleanly stop when it misses and give me a game over. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> okay. It's coming up, hits the front, does not bounce. Boom game over and it kills the window and now let's come back to Visual Studio and you can see that it cleanly stopped, it cleanly exited without any errors. Okay, it cleanly exited without any errors and that's what you want. Okay, now let's actually see if we can play this a little bit. Okay, let's see if we can play this a little bit. All right, so now I am actually, ah, Okay, I think I bounced it. The problem is the keyboard is in my way. <clears throat> All right, so now what I like to do is I like to just continue to track it. The spring on my joystick is a little strong, so it's very easy for me to go left and right, but the corners are a little bit of a challenge. Ah, I missed it. Okay, let me try one more time and then I won't bar bore you anymore with my gameplay, but I want to get it at least twice. I, I haven't really gotten, I've written the code and everything, but I haven't really gotten acclimated to this joystick very well yet. So let's try here. Okay, so we are, we are going to, ah, I lied. I'm going to do it one more time. And you know what else is happening? I think when my fingers are touching underneath here, it is changing the resistance. And when it's changing the resistance, then the, uh, you know, my finger is becoming part of the joystick circuit and then it doesn't uh, behave perfectly well. So let's see now if I can do this. At least that's a good quick excuse that I came up with. Okay, I bounced it that time. Let's let it go back and then come back and let's see if I can get one more. So you can see it's gonna bounce off the back wall now. Now it's coming back towards me, so I better get my game face on here. Ah, I didn't do it, okay. Guys, I'm just not very, I'm not very acclimated to the joystick. And also, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm getting a mild shocking sensation as I play with this joystick. And the reason for that is our house is so crazily done, things aren't really 
wired. They're not completely grounded. And so sometimes if I touch something like the Arduino, I can get a little bit of a tingle and then that is a little bit of a distraction. So I've successfully covered for my uh, my shameful gameplay here, my shameful gameplay, I have sort of successfully covered, um, covered for that. So uh, guys, man, this has been a lot of fun and I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. I do need to go ahead and give you your homework for next week. And what your homework for next week is, I've kind of gotten this thing working. I've showed you how to do the bounce where you bounce off of the paddle and either you hit the bat paddle and it bounces or you miss the paddle and it gives you a game over. Go ahead and turn this into a more elegant game, maybe where you keep score, maybe you get five lives and when your five lives are over, then the game is over or, you know, add fancier graphics, make nicer paddles, you know, just do something to spit this thing up and let's see who can come up with the most bodacious 3D Pong game. I know some of you guys are like me, you're a little bit obsessive compulsive. And so I would really love to see if you guys could come up with something really incredible on this game. That's your homework for next week. Let me also tell you then what next week's lesson is going to be. You know, go ahead, do your homework, post your homeworks to YouTube. You know the drill. Link back to this video then in the description link over to your solution. I'll go take a look at it. You guys look at each other's. But next week, what we're probably going to do is we're probably going to leave the 3D Python uh, Pong game. And we're going to learn a little bit more about a client server relationship between the Arduino, between the Arduino and Python. Because really right now, what you kind of think is Arduino is just sitting there throwing data and all Python is doing is just waiting, waiting, waiting. When the data is there, it reads it, then wait, 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 read. And so there is no real handshaking, no real coordination of what's going on. And I want to show you how to do a client server relationship. In a client server relationship, Python is the, uh, or Arduino is the client. Okay. Arduino is the client. And uh, no, Arduino is the server because the Arduino is going to serve. In a client server relationship, it's the client that's in charge. So Arduino is going to sit and it's going to wait. It's going to do nothing until it hears from Python. Then when Python sends it a command, it goes out and it does what Python asks for and it returns the data. Okay, and so Arduino just sits and waits until Python tells it to do something. Then on the Python side, it goes and it's doing whatever and when it wants something, it sends a command to Arduino, then it sits and waits for the response. And when it gets the response, then it reads it in. But it is the client. It's the one placing the order. And the Arduino is the server. It's the one serving what is being asked for. And so this is a really important concept. And so next week I'll probably go back and like hook up a sensor or something like that. And then what we'll do is we'll jump in and we'll figure out how to do a, do a simple client server type relationship. Okay, guys, man, I am having a lot of fun with this. It's a beautiful day out there. Do you guys see how clear it is? Sometimes it's a little misty, a little foggy. It's a sun, sunshiny, beautiful day sitting here looking at the source of the River Nile, the headwaters of the River Nile, and uh, having a lot of fun here. Guys, if you enjoy this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below because comments, subscriptions, and, uh, and thumbs up helps this video to be shown to more people because the world needs more people coding and doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McCorder coming to you from the source of the River Nile. I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>